Mr. Robert Williamson is currently a human resource consultant. Uh, he has expertise in outplacement, assessment, and selection, and is qualified to use a range of psychometric tools. Since 2003, he's done frequent consultancy work for the Scottish Government and the Crown Office, including the Procurator Fiscal Department and Registers of Scotland. He's worked in a variety of projects, including security services, Immigration Department, Inland Revenue, Scottish Water, BAA, Barclays Bank, Royal Bank of Scotland. There's a long list. Where's all this come from? <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah, he's yeah. an experienced assessor and organisation developer and change consultant. Uh, and he's held senior management and internal consultancy positions in public, private, and voluntary sectors. And he also has a, a, an impressive record of missionary work and leadership responsibilities in our uh, unificationist community. Shall we invite him to speak? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. right. uh, that's the problem when you're asked to send something in, you see. You, you, you think that you would just take one or two words. <laughs> um, okay, I need to look at the, um, yes. the small uh, projector there. Um, Okay. Okay. So I just want to um, share a few words in the next 15 minutes, um, but also perhaps uh, looking from different um, angles and to create. Uh, Food for thought, food for thought. Um, and in these 15 minutes, um, I'm taking the premise that um, all of us here, um, that we <clears throat> believe that True Father is the Messiah. And that the, I see this constitution as just being a, a step, another step. So. A few points then, um, given the title here, Practical Implications of the Constitution of Chinul Guk. Um, way back in 2001, I think you remember our father's tour, rebuild the family, restore the community, renew the nation uh, and the world. So I just want to spend a few minutes looking at the uh, sort of the spiritual background. As was, was already, I think, said earlier on, um, the constitution of the kingdom of God would have been promulgated in his time. An invincible nation would have been established with the sovereignty of God, spearheaded by the last Adam, Jesus Christ, as king. Even the Roman Empire would have been humbled before God's kingdom. This is a prediction of Isaiah. Of the increase of his government and peace, there will be no end upon the throne of David and over his kingdom to establish it and to uphold it with justice and righteousness from this time forth and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this, Isaiah 9 Sim. So that's from the very early days. <clears throat> um, Father's message uh, in 1974 in New York. So this title here, The Word Made Clear. So I'll let you read the, the aspects there in the slide and um, about how Father you know, changed his name. And the concluding... Together, Sam Myung means make clear. So the full name can be taken to mean the word made clear. The word made clear. So the constitution, the constitution, remember we're, we're taking the premise that, that um, we all are saying that Father is Messiah. So the constitution is a step. Okay? So the word made clear. Father's goal, then, to explain to mankind the word, to make it clear. 
And as you can see there, uh, again, uh, you can read on the slide a little bit of the history, um, which we're all familiar with, of, uh, from very formal beginnings in 1954, when the church was established as AUWC, um, and then to the last major missionary push in 1975, and now, of course, the church exists uh, in over 100, and, well, in every single country, I think, in the world, um, either in a big way or a small way. But there's a, a presence there. Uh, looking back, I was trying to find uh, um, where did sort of too far talk about the Constitution. And again, previous speakers. Um, brought up some points. And I found that uh, to father establish the American Constitution Committee, ACC, maybe some of us in this room um, were working with this or were involved with this, or maybe some of our parents maybe <laughs> uh, were involved in this in 1987. And that then later evolved and became the American Freedom Coalition and after the fall of communism, the American Family Coalition. So there was a sort of evolutionary process there. But at the beginning, True Father's instruction was very clear. You know, American Constitution Committee. Now, the title there, Learning from a Recent National Example, Kenya. Um, you may recall uh, two, uh, three, three, uh, three and a half years ago, tremendous problems in Kenya where tribal warfare basically broke out again. Um, and so much so you know, that they decided that they had to rewrite, rewrite the constitution because they felt that the constitution that they had, that they had written at the time of independence uh, in the early 1960s from Great Britain was no longer um, strong enough and was no longer able to solve the problems. But it's an example of where, on a national level, in a nation, where if, the concert, if something goes wrong, it can lead to awful bloodshed. And maybe you remember some of the news reports. Um, Kenya, by the way, I, I just put there the motto and the anthem there is a very um, Christian, very religious uh, background nation, not only with Christianity, but also uh, from the Muslim faith. So the goal of the new Kenya constitution, adopted very recently in 2010, and only became fully functional uh, last year, um, is playing a pivotal role in the devolution of power to the regional local governments and ensures the future government of Kenya. So there, this was the main aim, to decentralize, and we've been, had a lot of discussion already so far about this, this worry of the Supreme Council. And, and that's how it kind of was before, of how to get the power or to get it out to the local communities to devolve. So the challenge that Kenya had then in the new constitution, the role of the judiciary uh, is essential given that it plays an important role in arbitrating should there be a dispute among the government parties. This is of extreme importance due to the fact that the ineffectiveness of the judiciary was one of the principal reasons, principal reasons for the instability the country faced uh, three years ago, four year, three and a half years ago, before the approval of the new constitution. And so for political stability, the ju judiciary must interpret and enforce the constitutional provisions in an autonomous manner. So the main goal, the main, uh, was, this is what they're trying uh, to achieve with their new, con new constitution, and as you can see there on the slide, they've gone for a government, presidential republic, 
president, deputy president, then the parliament of Kenya is the bicameral legislature of Kenya. It consists of two houses, Senate, upper house, national assembly, lower house. So the practical difficulties in Kenya then in trying to get the constitution over to the people was first of all the inadequate level of civic um, education. Um, how to explain to the people the new constitution. And of course, we've got the same difficulty uh, in our church. How do we explain the new constitution? Um, and in the second point there, in particular, inadequate civic education severely compromises the role of the people to effectively exercise their sovereign power through public participation in policy making, legislation, and development planning. Then they also made the comment about amendments, and this, we've also already had some discussion uh, this morning about uh, the rush to amendments. And uh, as you read there, um, if there is a rush um, to amend the Constitution, uh, and with not enough thought given to issues, it can throw up some other uh, difficulties and, and problems. And as you see there in the bottom line, the net effect serving the executive and failing the people of Kenya, failing the people of Kenya. And so a lot of our discussions are centering around about, you know, not to fail the membership. So the devolution of, uh, devolution of government um, was the main part of the Constitution of Kenya in 2010. And um, county governments are under threat as seen in the various proposals to amend devolution related legislation. So challenges that Kenya face and that we may also face. One, knowledge and understanding of the constitution. In the case of the Kenya was how to explain this to the ordinary people in the street, the grass, grassroots level. Likewise, um, we're, at least uh, here in this country, we're starting to have discussion groups about the, uh, about the Constitution. Um, and we're able to uh, discuss it uh, freely. Secondly, how about the attitude of change? We need a big mindset change in our church. Very, very big uh, mindset um, to, to consider uh, implementing uh, the Constitution. Remember I said at the beginning um, the Constitution is, is a step. Um, number three, there's negative politics. Kenya, they face a lot of negative politics, a lot of uh, MPs just thinking of their um, uh, short-term uh, benefits, short-term goals, sh short-term positions. Uh, likewise in our church, we have a lot of negativity uh, about the whole idea of the uh, Constitution. Um, and, but at least we have uh, discussion uh, starting and going on, and I think that's, re that's really great. But there is um, all kind of thoughts, and today we've been, we've been able to share uh, and express a lot of thoughts. That's great. Uh, number four, ideological and logistical disparities. Organizations which should be working together sometimes end up as antagonists, thereby delaying certain processes. Well, in Kenya, they had a lot of problems with that. In our church, it often seems that our organizations can't work together. Um, UPF versus FFWPU, or Women's Federation you know, versus UPF, and you know, all kinds of uh, battles uh, are going on. So how are we going to get uh, an alignment of all our organizations uh, to work together? So number five, how to bring about a participatory approach. So our goal, so 
already has been said that this constitution is acted, just to read it out again, is enacted to establish the laws, principles, and guidelines that will serve all the people of Chinilgu and guide them so they may embody the word which true parents have revealed throughout their lives and establish the structure of life, of family, of national churches, and of the global church in order to bring about the firm establishment and com completion of Chinul Guk. Um, structure, structure. Another sort of words we can throw in there is uh, heavenly order. Um, heavenly order is that another word we can throw in is heavenly tradition, you know, um, which starts but will go on from, um, I think, from generation to generation. Uh, uh, just the way that, because of the, how the church uh, has expanded from one true father to step by step through us, and hopefully will continue through the, the rest, of, uh, rest of the world. So we, we already have a certainly heavenly order uh, in, in place, certainly heavenly uh, tradition uh, in place. Maybe you're trying to think of an example. <laughs> For example, if, if we, when we gather together, when we gather together, um, we gather according to our blessing seniority. So you have the older couples, 36 couples, uh, in the Western, more um, uh, seven, 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 seven you know, uh, 1,800, 6,000, and so on, in, a, in, a, in what we call a heavenly order. It's not just a, a free-for-all. There's a heavenly order there, and also to, to bring in that word uh, tradition. So our process... Very simply, our process, first to get our church branches to follow the new constitution. Well, we're having discussions about that. Second, Vision 2020, to have a whole nation where all the people follow true parents and adopt, adopt the constitution as a national constitution, replacing the existing national constitution of that nation. That, that is very simply speaking, but this is how I understand uh, the process is meant to take place. Third... National, national constitution? Mm -hmm. Church national constitution? Uh, yeah, to replace the national constitution so, of, the nation. of the nation. Yeah. So therefore, don't forget the word, the constitution is a step. Therefore, before this step, we have an awful lot of work to do to get a practical constitution working so that if it comes to an island nation saying, okay, we proclaim true parents as our uh, uh, father of faith and we proclaim uh, the national religion or ideology of um, the, the principle, uh, we replace our national constitution with this constitution, Chinilgul constitution. So we have an awful lot of work to do um, to prepare for that day. Third, other nations then start to follow the lead of that first nation, and uh, could be a small island, could be Korea, but some nation to start. And finally, the whole world follows. That's, I understand that's uh, the, our vision. Our time? Right. Okay. Uh, just to, <clears throat> you can look at the structure there on the slide. Uh, yeah, sorry, sorry. Um, yeah, okay. You can find it in the Constitution. It's on the Constitution. It's just repeating there uh, the structure of the, of the uh, you know, how we're working. We're going to have Chinilgook Supreme Council, the Chinilgook Government, the Chinilgook National Assembly, which will consist of 210 persons. Um, the quorum will be 50%. Two thirds to pass a decision, then two parents approval to make law. Also, the Chinook Court, Chinook Foundation, 
which has the financial powers, the Chenelguk Media Committee, the regional church governance, uh, continental leaders, national church governance, national messiahs, national leaders, four years possible, and were, we already had some comments about that, uh, 12 years maximum in, in office. So that's just to, to an overview. But again, I come back to the word step. It's a step. So, of course, there's a lot of questions around the, the aspect of elections. As I see it, there's two methods possible. One, and this has been declared already, shall be held through universal, equal, direct, and secret ballot, or also by lottery, based on recommendations. I think this area we need to um, um, clear up or make more clear as quickly as possible. Uh, terms governing, any election in which less than one-third of the total eligible votes are cast shall be, in, shall be invalid. So one-third. So we've got terms of governing, but we need to decide you know, about elections and so on. Practical questions we might have about our Chinook Constitution. How do we create a vetting process for candidates to be elected to office? How do we organize elections? How do we organize a transition between our present church structure towards a new constitution? How do we educate the world? What is the qualification and disqualification of public officials? Conclusion, uh, you can read there <clears throat> just a, a quote, again, ending about um, Professor Bujang's uh, testimony uh, about uh, father, about uh, true father's uh, work. The sole purpose is peace. And uh, finally, and also a quotation from uh, Dr. Kittery uh, in the foreword of the, of the book, The Seeds of uh, True Peace. Reverend Samya Moon is certainly one of these persons. His place in human history is assured. We merely must make certain that the seeds, and we've been using that word earlier and quite, through quite a few discussions, he planted for true peace are nourished by all of us uh, throughout the world. Thank you very much. Right, well done. Good one. So thank you very much for that. Um, before we have a kind of final uh, conversation uh, with all the floor, are there any specific questions or comments which relate directly to what Mr. Williamson shared? Mr. Graham. Um, no. Yeah, I was in uh, the States in the 80s in, uh, in Washington, and I think you'll find that the American Constitution Committee was more aimed at trying to uphold the values of religious liberty and freedom within the American Constitution because uh. Father, um, uh, in the wake of Danbury, felt that he had got a, a raw deal in, mm. in light of the actual freedoms that were, um. were uh, embodied in that Constitution. They were not a kind of a yeah. preamble yeah. to creating mm. such a Good. Constitution of our own. Mm. Thank you. Mr. Stevenson? I have two quick short points. The first is, you, you said that you thought there was a general negativity about the idea of a constitution in the UK, but I don't think that's so. I think the negativity is about the content of this particular one. Most people I've talked to think that the idea of having a constitution is a good thing. So I'd just like to correct that comment. I hope I didn't say that the whole of the UK, do I? <laughs> yeah, well, when you first the UK, you said that generally people are negative about the idea of a constitution. And the other thing is about heavenly tradition. Okay. A constitution. The other thing is about uh, heavenly tradition. I actually feel quite disoriented over the last 30 years with the, cons the consistency of the inconsistency of heavenly traditions, how they constantly get changed and, and for expediency, this thing can be dropped or this thing can be ignored. And so uh, I would say there's lots of ceremonies, ceremonial behavior and ways of doing things like, you know, the blessed couples going in a certain... But tradition to me is something a little bit deeper and I haven't actually seen that much that's that's uh, really survived, apart from, you know, the blessing and certain things like that. So I feel a little bit worried about how um, how traditions are dropped and new ones brought in and they're changed and ignored when, the, when it's expedient. So uh, I would like to see traditions that make up the identity of our culture, uh, given, you know, I mean, even we were talking earlier about the when 
Father gave the eight sacred texts. Within a year of Father passing away, there were massive edits being done on them. And so I feel worried about that. Yeah, I mean, the, 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 whole, the whole premise is, is utterly what everybody wants, especially you know, when we get down to the actual roots of what it's about, educate the whole world. I mean, you have to get to the roots of how to do that, but the point is that we want this constitution to represent West and East, and this, at the moment, it's, it's so, so obvious that you can see through it, really. There's a cultural divide. We, we come from Reformation, and uh, it's a, we, we believe in God being ourselves, you know, like that uh, Father is the example of a man who came as a man, and uh, we want to emulate. Even, even I could go beyond. I mean, in this theory, I could, my achievements could go beyond Fathers, uh, that, that's the freedom that we have in the Western, in the Western traditions. And um, this is not being uh, able to relate to when you see a constitution like this. Oh. I think there's a misunderstanding going on. I think one uh, practical thing that um, the organizers of this meeting can do is at the very end of the constitution, uh, there's an email address, I think. and. Um, the organizer of this meeting perhaps could put a synopsis of some of the many key points. And uh, is it there or is it, um, it must be on the email. Um, <clears throat> um, and, then, and then send it to the, the, the person that's mentioned in the email uh, in charge of the constitutional uh, committee. And uh, let's see if there's some give and take starting. Yeah. Mm. To follow on from that, that is entirely my intention um, oh, that uh, you won't find that email address in, in the constitution it was uh, attached no. to a memo uh, listing I think 11 of the 12 or 12 of the there should be 13 members of, of the uh, Supreme Council 12 of them were named and one of them the chairperson was not named one could assume that the chairperson is true mother two other names were mentioned one of whom was uh, Thomas Huang, International Vice President, who is the Secretary General of the Supreme Council. Not one of the 13 members of the Supreme Council, but the Secretary General serving them. And one other gentleman. Um, I had the opportunity to have breakfast with Thomas Huang on last Sunday and asked him this question very directly. You know, who are you? What, what's your position within the Supreme Council? And he articulated that he's not a member of the Council, but he's serving in the position of Supreme sorry, serving the position of Secretary General. And when I asked, could we offer some suggestions, he was very encouraging to mm. send something to that email address. And he gave me the impression that he had a team, a secretarial team who could work on that. Oh. So I don't think we have the time right now. And also, it, it, I think it would be clumsy if we tried to do it right now. What I suggest is, with your permission, um, or, or perhaps even with your help, um, I would like to uh, distill the content of this morning and this afternoon sessions into a few uh, key ideas, key points and reflections, uh, balancing with some, some uh, I think we would all like to express our gratitude that having a constitution is broadly speaking a move in a good direction, but then reflect on aspects of it which need to be improved. And I, I would like to send that, hopefully in the, in the next week, before the Constitution uh, is enacted or something like that, from, from the 11th of the April. Deadline. Well, it's the deadline, basically. <laughs> or else it'll be to <laughs> <laughs> Hence the urgency of organising this meeting. Is that okay? Yes. Yeah, yes. yeah. Can, can we copy it in? Or Absolutely. Um, I intend for the video of this program to be uh, widely circulated and accessible and the content uh, prepared the PowerPoint presentations and the papers to be distributed. If you would rather not have your, uh, uh, your name or your image distributed online, then please let me know and, and we can somehow uh, protect your online brand. 
and um, otherwise, hopefully, we can circulate this this kind of uh, material so other people can participate. Um, I strongly encouraged some of the Austrian members to create their own symposium, and I got the impression that they had the will and desire to do it. So I don't expect this to be the only or the last conversation to take place regarding this topic. I'm hoping other countries will follow suit. And I'm also hoping that even here in the UK, we can have a kind of follow-up uh, event where we've had more time to reflect and, and prepare more specific uh, contributions. I've been told that the UTS reunion might be taking place around, the, is it the 31st of May or something like that? It's usually around that time, yeah. So, uh, so my request would be to those UTS graduates is, is if possible, we could somehow combine those two things and, and use that as an opportunity to, to widely invite many other folks to, to join the UTS party and, uh, and uh, continue this conversation in a constructive direction. Excellent. I have two questions. After Mr. Turfus. Could you wait for Mr. Turfus? Oh, I'd like, so, Mr. Chairman, I would like to propose that we, we take things one step further than what you have proposed. Okay. And that rather than just as a group sending off our own comments to Korea, that we seek to take this process to our national church and to have a full on consultation across this nation yeah, yeah. as to whether our brothers and sisters here are happy to have this constitution enacted in this name. And whether we want what we have joined and what we have participated for the past 30, 40 years, however long it may be, whether we want that to be stolen by a group in Korea who are putting out a document in our name, which we despise. I think that's pretty, pretty, I think a, pretty fair, a pretty fair assessment of what most of the opinion has been today, that we despise the content of it. We don't see this as right as speaking in our name for what we want and that we do not want to be part of an organization which is governed by this constitution. We want to be part of the organization which we joined, which we are, which we are, we are happy to be in. But this constitution is doing something different. And I think it needs to be asked of the people in this country, do we want to be part of this new organization which is being called Chon Il Guk, but which is being governed by an alien document which those of us here in the room who have spoken mostly seem to have a strong dislike to. I think it is our duty to take it to our brothers and sisters across this country, to have the debate, to exercise our democratic rights, which as it seems are guaranteed in the constitution. And we should decide as a nation, do we want to be governed by this constitution or do we not? And we should make that choice. And we should offer our brothers and sisters across the nation to participate in that choice with us. I think they deserve nothing less. Thank you. Mr. Yeah. Nikai, would you like to share? <coughs> well, yeah, Connects to what was just said, because my first question was, uh, when you convened this, Matthew, did you, were you doing it on behalf of the church? Or, because I saw in your email you said advisory committee, blah, 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 mm. four million executives. I was thinking, I've been no, in this no, church. No, the other way around. Or executive, yeah. I've been in this church for a while. How come I didn't know all those names? But anyway, putting that aside, um, so could you tell us? Okay, quick history of that. Um, I believe that it, the suggestion was offered to our national leader, Mr. Jack Corley, to uh, create an executive board. Initially, uh, in consultation with, with a, a few other advisors, the initial step was to create not a, an executive board, but an advisory group. That advisory group has had now, I think, three meetings, uh, and the, 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 that group has been made up of people uh, in a sense, ha selected, hand-selected by the, the national leader and the advisors to create that group. And in the process of defining the roles and, and responsibilities of that group, it, it was felt that it would be a much more powerful uh, institution if, if it was actually an executive board. It's still in the process of figuring out what it is and, and what its makeup is and what its roles are. But the, the as my perspective is that its main responsibility is to have a body of people who can support the national leader in fulfilling the national leader's responsibilities. Yeah. And that's not just for the that's for the whole church. So this is for the whole British, Great British movement. And with respect to this, this, this event, we had a, a meeting at which I was present and I'm a member of the executive, I've been invited to be a member of the executive board. I raised up the issue of the constitution and the unanimous response was, please go ahead and organize this Thank symposium. You. And the second question was what they said before a few sessions back. Sorry, I was very quietly waiting for my chance.
chance, but uh, uh, it's, uh, in our church here in Britain, we have some family document and it was to fulfill some charitable purposes and we have trustees. And one of them was this interesting one, if the founder had some. Yes. And then you just said that very quickly. And, said, and we also made some provisions so if he passes away, what we'll do. Yes. And I thought there's some parallels with that with our situation as the church is also. What were those provisions? Yeah, actually, you know, be honest, I'm still confused. Uh, there are two versions, and I have to check this. The original version was, um, I think the original version was upon the death of the founder, then the trustees would, would take uh, the role. Or, uh, in the, no, no, this is, this is Family Federation, formerly Samya Moon Foundation. Um, at some point, it was changed to the founder's successors. But I'm still slightly confused myself. I have to go back to look at the... Because we made certain amendments. And that's one weak point I can't remember, to be honest, which one it is. But it does make a difference. Of course, it makes a difference to the trustees. Because it, when it's uh, the final... The fi there's, two, there's two objects. And then the final object, the third one, says, and any and other uh, charitable activities which the founder or after his death, whoever may, um, how to say, dictate or, 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 or require in writing, right? So, so in the first case, the trustees could require something in writing. It's activity, charity activity. In the second case, it's the successor of the true parents, which would be mother. So it's quite critical we get this right. Sorry, guys, the other trustees, we have to check this out. I still don't, but we did various changes over the years, and they're all held by Joanna in her box somewhere, so we'll check that one out. But that's the answer to that. One thing I didn't mention in my speech <laughs> is that there are implications in this um, document here that we may, would, may have to change our trustee to come in line with the Chongogu Constitution. That's something I didn't mention in my speech, but it's also something hovering in my mind, and I'm not sure how that'll play out, but to, in that area you were talking about. Of course, we can continue our conversations uh, downstairs. I think there's still probably some snacks and stuff that we could talk over. I, I do, however, want to see if there are any, any of the quieter people. I mean, you may just want to remain quiet and, and uh, reserve your, your deep, ponderous thoughts to yourself or, or to a private conversation later on. But one last chance to... Um, because, well, Robert has to go somewhere, and I think a lot of us, yeah. Uh, I, w I want to draw the, the, the program to a formal conclusion, yeah. so those who want to leave can leave, um, and those who want to remain and continue. I've got just a quick question. Would the people who presented their talks uh, be able to circulate their written papers? Most symposiums have that sort of approach. I'm wondering if we can do the yeah. same. There are some synopses that Matthew had in, in, uh, in advance, and then there's the other things that came up, yeah. I think the answer to that question is yes. Okay. We'll, we'll try to make sure that all content prepared and delivered will be made widely available, and especially to those present here today. Would you mind awfully if I close with a prayer? Can I just uh, finish with a, a, a quick closing thought? Closing thought. Uh, you know, I, I lived in Korea for eight years, and one of the purposes of going there was just to immerse myself to get under the skin of the psychology. And so I just thought it's important to understand this whole constitution a little bit in context. So I'd just like to point out that um, uh, we have to recognize that Korea, Korean people, the Korean leadership, and even true mother are a product of Korean history. And for the most part, that is not even monotheistic. And it's not Judeo-Christian, it's not democratic. And, uh, and I met many good Christians in Korea who did not have a Christian mindset. They had a theological concept of Christianity, but their way of thinking and their way of treating each other and structuring everything was not Christian, it's not democratic. And this is not a criticism, it's just an observation. Yeah. And so my feeling is that um, they are still like that. They haven't changed, even though they've been in church and listening to Father for, fi for 50 or 60 years. And uh, even True Mother's uh, psychology is, is like that. And it's a very paternalistic culture. And it's, it's, it's a very top-down power structure culture, even though it can be very nurturing and very beautiful. 
And so I often found that when they do things like this, like present a constitution, it's really just a patronizing pat on the head sometimes. And they just think, we'll tell them what they want to hear, but in reality, we'll just do the, do the, the, the thing we want anyway. And, and I do believe it's even permeated our Western church. I heard of a leader recently who I was in a, a meeting with the European, previous Euro, European leader, and he said, well, you know, Hyung Jin is doing these democratic reforms in America, so maybe that's going to come to England in the end, and maybe, President Song, maybe what we can do is we can have an election, but then we can just come to you and you can choose the leader. And so there is that, that sense of giving us what we want to hear, but really just ignoring it, and it just becomes a facade. Mm. So I, I don't really mean that as, a, really a, as an ad, ad hominem attack. It's just a, we have to recognize the reality of that yeah. they come from a different heritage. And so um, even though it might be nice to send our thoughts back to Korea, but um, we have to realize that I'm not sure how much they will listen because they really do think that they know better than us. And, and in some cases, maybe they do. But um, I think it's good to know that, that they don't think the same we do. They don't take these things as Final comment. Yeah. <coughs> Absolutely.